Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to take a quick look at the kind of first sims for the NBA slate for tonight. I'm just uh, getting my first look at the, the numbers here, so it is going to be somewhat early, but I did watch Bobby's uh, preview and get a sense for, at least from a game-by-game -game perspective, what to expect. Um, so we're just going to take a quick look at the Sheets and then do kind of an early build and see uh, see what it looks like. We're going to do for both uh, DraftKings and FanDuel. So interestingly when we rate these guys first of all by point per dollar i mean obviously you see kind of an 8x projection out of uh amen thompson which is dominating the proceeding so to speak and his ownership at 71 percent is kind of following along and then you have a drop to a couple of decent you know 6x plays around there between royce o'neill dennis smith wow both from brooklyn whole bunch of new york so there's a whole bunch going on with the new york teams um today and then here you have two more Houston's, um, and then another Nick. So it looks as if it, it it looks as though the slate is very concentrated, you know, up with these games, um, and that certainly makes a lot of sense. And when you have these values available, you could either kind of like play mid range by playing stuff like Sangoon or Cam Thomas, Divincenzo now considering mid range, or or and or use those cheaper ones so you can get up to. Um, Luca, for example, um, or Shea, and those are actually the two main um, the two main spend ups that you might want to consider getting to by using stuff like, well, presuming you're going to use Amon Thompson. Uh, what I'm saying is maybe use other guys like that, like Royce O'Neal, Dennis McJr., you know, Miles McBride. Pay way way down so you can make sure that you can get up to Luca pretty easily. You might even be able to play Luca and Shea um, if that's something that you want to do. Because, I mean, you just look at how cheap all these guys are. Um, so let's just go ahead and, I guess, run some sims and see what it would look like. I mean, I'm pretty sure that no matter what we do, we're going to end up getting 100% of Amon Thompson. But we'll, we'll, we'll confirm that. And, again, this is a kind of a process video. So once you have your projections, whether they're from Saber Sim or from me or from wherever, upload them into the system here. And then you kind of run your 5,000 lineups. Um, you know, I'm listing 50 as the ones we want to look at because those are the you know, amount of uh, lineups we're actually playing. Actually, I think we're playing 51 maybe because we're playing, I think, the alley-oop and, um, and the fadeaway. But we'll, we'll confirm that in a minute. So we're going to run these and see what we get. Um, and again, I am going to do FanDuel as well for this, but you see it is running actually relatively quickly. Let's see. First, I want to see what I'm what I'm playing here in the NBA. Oh, I didn't even did I not even register yet? I thought that I had. Oh, I have. I believe I have. Let's see something. Did I not register for the NBA yet? It's possible. Oh, I did. Okay. So building 5,000 again, this is just to give us a pool to work from. I, I'd be curious what the first lineup we would get without Miles uh, Amon Thompson. Actually, it's not really that interesting to me. I, I guarantee this is going to say all 100 before we do anything. And it will say exactly 100. And then also, night. wow, 98% Royce O'Neal. That is not something that I was expecting. Okay, So we'll see what we want to do. Um, and then you see Precious and basically all the Brooklyns and the Knicks and the Houstons and and then Shea and Luca. You know, it's it's not exactly rocket science, this, this type of slate. But let's, for the hell of it, um, run a sim. And what we're doing is we're uploading our lineups that we've pre-ordered, so to speak, on DraftKings, so that we could right-click here, hit Add Contest Sim, and it's uploading the information from the fadeaway, the, you know, the lottery there. You see it's taking the flagship MME field, right, of what types of lineups we're expecting to play against, entering all the relevant data so that when we run the contest simulation, um, it's going to be comp comparing our lineups to the actual lineups that they think that we're going to be facing. 
So this is where we can, you know, factor in ownership and leverage and things like that. So let's go ahead and run this. And this button here, run contest. And now you can access SaberSim through, directly through SaberSim or through TrueDFS. I mean, I think we give you a deal where you get not only SaberSim, but all the other TrueDFS stuff that goes along with it, you know, including this, for example, uh, kind of premium content. And one thing that you're going to have to get used to is when you try to compare what types of lineups you get by writing your straight Saber Sim Saber score lineups, so to speak. Well, that's a lot of alliteration there. Uh, versus the actual contest sims, it's not going to see, be that much different. Like for example, when we sort the fadeaway by risk adjusted ROI, it's the same type of thing. You know, you're still getting Amon Thompson, I presume 100 percent And then maybe a little less O'Neill, maybe 90. Even Chenzo 70, whatever. It's it's basically the same guys. You're actually not getting as much Luca. You're only getting about 13% Luca, which is actually pretty, pretty important. Um, the next thing that you might want to consider doing is extending the requirement for your uniqueness. In other words, not uniqueness. I mean, for each lineup, you want to be a little bit different than the other. So what you can do is go from min uniques one to maybe min uniques two. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you, you know, more, more players, you know what I mean? Like more diverse types of lineups, but you're also not going to be ranking. You're also, also, you're not going to be getting your top 50, but I think it's worth the trade off here. And it's just a question of how unique your lineups you want to get from one another. And one kind of trick, which Jordan from Saberson uh, taught us is, you keep going min uniques until Saberson doesn't even let you build the amount of lineups you want to build. So like you'll see that when we went from you min uniques five, where you could play 51 lineups to min unique six, then it yells at you. So if you want to be, you know, really super unique, <laughs> you'll play min uniques five, but he actually suggests to go to min uniques four and I think it's this is pretty reasonable. So this is, I think, we're going to do. Uh, and I'm not going to make any particular rules, how many nets, how many nicks, how many whatevers. I don't really care too much about that. And we'll just go ahead and save this for now to the fadeaway. Now let's uh, re-rate these by the alley-oop, which is the bigger buy-in. Now, it's, you know, you're supposed to be getting different types of lineups for this. Um, and... This looks very similar, but again, it's not as big of a deal when it comes to uh, basketball, contest over contest. Anyway, uh, so we'll save this one into the alley-oop. And again, this is what we're getting. Knicks, Brooklyn, Knicks, Brooklyn, Knicks, Brooklyn. And this one, instead of playing, you know, this one doesn't play Luca, but you play Sangoon and Shea. Certainly makes a lot of sense. And we'll go ahead and save that into my pool here. Okay. Let's pull up a uh, FanDuel. And we'll do the same thing with FanDuel. We will upload the projections. And I'm not playing the... Uh, the, the MME, I'm only playing the big buy-in. But let's just see brokers, what looks different. So let's only build 2,000 lineups here. And we'll rank the top 20. I, I guess I would be interested to know how the... how much different it looks. I mean, I didn't actually pull up the FanDuel sheets, so we could predict by doing that. Well, let's see. Um, so we're looking at this. It's very similar. I expect it to be very similar. Let's just take a look. Yeah, Amon Thompson, Royce, and it's very similar, which is very interesting. All right, so let's uh, save these. And we only are playing the big buy-in for now, so 
We'll upload the entries file. And then again, we can right click here, add contest sim, and you can do that for whatever contest that you feel like playing. We'll run the contest sim, and this is the process I use literally every day in, in most most sports. I mean, each sport has its own little, you know, its own quirk. And there are some sports I'll make more changes, post build, things like that. Um, but NBA is usually very projectable, so I, I'll, I'll rely on the projections for the NBA and the Sims in the NBA more than the other sports, which might explain why I'm not doing as well in the NBA as the other sports. But anyway, that's for another discussion. Let's see what this looks like. All right, so we rate these by, this is the monster, and you have you know your choice between a couple of options, like this one, and these, it's all pretty similar. This one, guess, is John Isaac. That's that's the one guy who's different, right? Getting John Isaac in your FanDuel builds when you're not really getting in your DraftKings ones. Um, so I think that's actually pretty healthy to go ahead and do that. So let's uh, save the Jonathan Isaac one to FanDuel. Oops. Uh, Wait, so let's, okay, and then we'll download this here. And then we will upload the CSV and we're good. And this is pretty much what we do um, once we have our projections down. So, uh, and once you have them tweaked. So what the way you tweak them is again, you, you show up at six o'clock you listen to what we have to say in the live stream. Uh, not tonight, I'm not gonna be around for that, but Bobby will. And you can make some tweaks to your projections or you can go with them, but that's really just the process for playing the NBA. Um, and uh, I guess that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody. And I'll catch up to you later.